Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to perform a website monitoring with the help of Zabbix. And in order to monitor any given website, we're going to need to create a simple web check. Then we're going to create a trigger to get notified whenever there is a problem with the website. And at the end, I'll show you how to create a simple uptime checker for your website inside Zabbix. But before I dive into the configuration itself, I wanted to show you what's happening under the hood. So whenever we are creating a web check, there would be two stages to it. And I'm talking about the basic web check here. So at the stage one, Zabbix will send a get request to the web server and it will receive one of the HTTP status codes. And in our scenario, we are interested in HTTP status code 200, which means that everything is okay. And when Zabbix receives the OK status, it will go ahead and download the web page with help of curl. It will analyze it and it will store the latency and speed results into the database. It will also look for any specific text you give it within the web page so it can check the web page consistency. Also, if you're interested, you can have a look at the HTTP status codes page. And on the page itself, we can see that 100 codes are informational, 200 codes are success codes. So as I said before, 200 means okay. Um, I mean, for this basic web check, 200 is uh, the only thing we're interested in. Uh, but if you wanna learn more about HTTP status codes, it will certainly be beneficial for you if you want to perform a really advanced web check, then go to httpstatuses.com and all the information is there. So at this point with the theory covered, let's actually get into configuring stuff. So first of all, I want to show you one of my already configured web checks. For example, let's check Google. And in here you can see the web check speed and response time. This is not the only data you can get, but it's pretty much the only data you can get from the very basic web check. There's also a history of failed checks if you go to monitoring latest data and filter down only web monitoring. Now, when you want to create a web check, you need to create a host first. It's okay if you already have a host in the system, you can add it there, but because I don't, I'm gonna create a new host. For the purposes of this video, I'll be adding my own website for the monitoring. Host name would be gateway-it.com, then groups will be GWIT hosting, then I'll switch to DNS name instead of the IP address. And at this point, you can just add your server to the stack. And the server is added. Now we need to go to the web section and create a new web scenario. In here, I'm gonna use web check as my web scenario check name. Then application is also web check. This is just for simplicity purposes for the future. Now go to steps, add a new step. Name would be web check as usual. URL, HTTPS. You need to include the whole URL, including HTTP or HTTPS portion. Then gateway-it.com. We don't need to touch anything in here. Click follow redirects. We need to get the page body. Then required string. I'm gonna check for this text on the page. And if that text is missing, we're gonna receive a trigger. And the requested status code would be 200. Click add. And add again. And this is it. Just like that, we added the web scenario to check our website for any inconsistencies or downtime. Now, in order to get notified if there is a problem, we need to create a new trigger. So go to triggers, and I'm gonna cheat a little bit over here, and I will copy the trigger expression 
from my other website. Click Create Trigger. Give it a name, which in my case is going to be gatewayit.com is down. I'll check severity as disaster. The expression is going to be next. So this is going to be your host name. Keep in mind, it's not the website name. It's the name you've assigned your host to. So this is this name. And then we are basically checking if there is an error on the website, throw the trigger. And here we specify our web check itself. And the second part of the expression is if test fails, give us a trigger. Now let's check allow manual close and we can hit at at this point. And now if we go to monitoring dashboard and web monitoring, then we see our website over here. And Zabbix has already performed some checks on it. Now, what about the uptime, you say? Well, to check the uptime, you can go to reports, availability report. And from here, you can see all of the triggers and when they had problems. So at this point, our, our website has a 100% uptime. But to be honest with you, availability report gets very messy if you don't filter down things. And it's also hard to check SLAs. For example, if you are hosting a website for your client and you want to assure them that you have a good service and it's 99.99999% up, then it's not the most convenient place to check it from. Instead, we can go to services and check it from here. But in order for anything to show up in here, we have to go to configuration, services, and create a new child service to perform an uptime check. So I'll create a new service. I'll call it gatewayit.com SLA. Then I'll give it 99% uptime because why not? Then for the trigger, I want to check gatewayit.com and then choose the appropriate trigger. And then I'll hit add. And now we can go back to monitoring services. In my opinion, it's much more convenient to view it from here than from availability report. And you can actually go into daily, weekly, monthly and yearly reports. Now, before I end this video, I wanted to show you how the failed web check looks like and what Zabbix does at that point when your web check fails. So I'll go to configuration hosts. Then I'll choose my website web check. I'll go to steps web check. And I'll edit the stack string on purpose. So it fails. Update, update. Now we need to give it a minute or two to realize that the website is down and we'll see how the failed web check looks like. Zabbix realized that there was a problem after about 30 seconds or so. And I was sitting directly on the dashboard. So it showed me that the website was down because of the trigger we set up. And we also see that there is one failed web check. And if I click on the web monitoring, you can see the exact error over here. And if I switch to latest data, you can also see it over here in the history. It's always going to show up in the history. So even if you missed the trigger, for example, if you didn't have email notifications on, then you can certainly go back and check if there was a problem at any point before if user, for example, reported it to you. Now, also, if we go back to services, we can see that our trigger is at disaster level, gateway IT is down, and it's counting the downtime. So at this point, our downtime is 0, 0190 and is growing. So let's go back to our web check and let's fix it.
Now I'll need to wait a few seconds for Zabbix to realize that the problem is gone. Okay, and the problem is gone. It took about 40 seconds this time because our website is being checked every minute. It might take up to a minute for Zabbix to realize that there is a problem or there is no problem and website is recovered. You can lower it down to something like 15 seconds, but it's going to put more load on your Zabbix server and the website itself as well. And before I go, I have one more thing to add. You have probably noticed that I'm checking google.com as well as my other websites. This is because if the Zabbix itself has a problem and there was an internet outage or something like that, I will not be able to tell if it was on my side or if Zabbix was failing in some way. So it's always good to add few public websites that you know are up 100% of the time. Something like Facebook, Google. So when you're running this kinds of web checks in production, certainly add few of the websites that are 100% up all of the time. And that way you can be sure that there was no problem with your Zabbix and there was certainly a problem with the web page you were checking. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and following us on Patreon and LBRY.